the house. Then David bought another burnt offering altar outside the house, but they were both part of the house. But the second altar was on the Mount of Olives outside the sanctuary, outside the original Garden of Eden. Because Adam was thrown out of the garden, he couldn't die in the garden. But it was still part of the house complex. Let's read that again. Ezekiel 43, 21. You will take the bull, all the bull offerings, all the sin offerings, from the altar and burn it in the circle of those words. Appointed place, criteria number one, of the house. But outside the sanctuary. So in order for the, in order for these bulls to be burned in the right place, it had to meet two criteria. It had to be within the house of Yahweh, but not in the sanctuary outside the camp. Did David know it? Of course he knew it. That's why he built and he bought not one, but two separate altars. Does this get any better than this? Paruch Hashem Yahweh. But see, now you and I, let's talk. You and I as believers, we talk a lot about the Moadim. What does Moadim mean? The fixed appointed times of Yahweh. What are some of the Moadim? Pesach, Chag Matzot, Chag Shavuot, Chag Sukkot. These are the appointed times of Yahweh. But Yahweh here speaks of the Mifcha. The word for appointed place is not Moed. It is the word Mifcha. Write it down, because you'll forget if you don't. The Hebrew word for appointed place here is the Hebrew word mifchad, which literally means, notice, it means, <laughs> oh, Father. You, enjoy, you guys enjoying? Amen. 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 with me. Amen. <laughs> The, the appointed place has to meet two criteria, Rachel. It has to be in the greater complex, but not in the sanctuary. It's got to be across the Kidron Valley to the place of the skull, which is where why the priests did the, the red heifer sacrifices, because it was part of the Torah, but they couldn't do it in the sanctuary, or they would defile themselves. They had to be purified and then enter the sanctuary. They had to be purified and then enter the, the, the Temple Mount or the Garden of Eden, formerly the Garden of Eden. Now, what is this word pachad? And then we'll close with one more thing. How many would give me another hour, please? Can I see your hand? Thou shalt not lie. It's in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Martha, you know what I'm saying? Look at you smiling, just like old time. But you know you want me to keep going, even though you're hungry, but you know what you want me to keep going. <laughs> the root word of the Hebrew word pachad, appointed place, is the word pachid, let me just make sure I got this right, pachad, I'm sorry, the Hebrew word appointed place is mifchad, mifchad, and from the Hebrew word mifchad, we get the verb pachad, which literally means to number or to count. So the, the term appointed place in the Hebrew is the word mifchad, which root word, pachad, means to number or to count. Golgotha, in Hebrew, not Aramaic, Golgotha is Aramaic. In Hebrew, galut, let me just make sure I, I have it right. Galgolet in Hebrew, write it down. The Hebrew Galgolet means the place to count, as well as the skull. So it was a place where humanity is counted, that you've got to go to this place to be counted, worthy to escape the death of Adam, who's buried on the Mount of Olives, and be counted worthy to inherit eternal life through the second Adam, Yeshua, on the same place. It's not just the place of the skull in Aramaic, the summit, Harosh in Hebrew. It is the place of the appointed place in which a human being is to be numbered by Yahweh. I want to be in that number. I want to be in that number where the saints go marching in. 
You want to be in that number? Amen. When the saints go marching in, huh? You want to be in that kingdom when the saints in the Kedushim go marching in? Ha, then you're going to have to climb to the rush of the Mount of Olives and appear before the second Adam, Yeshua, who died in the same place the first Adam died and be counted for the kingdom right there. The Hebrew word says, the, the sacrifices of the temple have to be carried outside the camp, but it's still the house of Elohim, but it's not the sanctuary. Did you get that? It's still the house of Elohim, but it's not the sanctuary. And that's why David brought two altars, one from Arvana and one from Ornan. Two dudes, two purchases. Abraham, are you with me? Amen. I didn't lose you to Sony. <laughs> <laughs> now you know why David had to purchase two altars, because he knew they were intertwined. But that's not all. I'm just going to be a little, a little free-spirited right now. Go back to Bereshit. Next week I'm going to show you Yeshua died on the tree of life. That's right. The same tree of life that was in the garden. I'll prove it. There will be no speculation. There will be no speculation. <laughs> Bereshit, thank you, brother. Bereshit, chapter 3, and verse 24. So that Hebrew word, I love it, in Ezekiel 43, 21, is the Hebrew word mifchad, which, which is the root word pachad, to count or to number at the appointed place. By the way, while you're turning to Bereshit, chapter 3, Genesis 3, 24, that was also the place where they conducted the temple tax. Each person on the top of the Mount of Olives was taxed, listen, at that location. And uh, those taxes and those poles used to be taken at the place of the head count. The place of the head count. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Tadaraba Yahweh. That's another story for another time. Now, can you prove, now if you weren't here, if you were here last week, like, like Britt was, I don't need to prove it to you, right? Because you were here last week, right? But let's assume you weren't here last week, then I need to prove it to you, right? So I'm going to prove it to you. Yahweh, when Yahweh gave a boot to Adam and Chava because they ate of the tree of what? They ate of the tree of the knowledge of what? Tov Yahweh said, out of here, I'm going to hide the tree of life, and I'm going to put Melachim, Cheruvim, before the tree of life, so A, you can't find it, and B, even if you could find it, you can't get to it. Yahweh said, I told you not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but you ate of the tree of the ant of the knowledge of Tov and Ra'ah. So I'm going to give you a, a divine kish boot across the Kidron Valley, the Valley of Death. And there you're going to establish the skull, the first skull, the first death of the whole human race, so that the second Adam could come and liberate the area of death. And when you come to, to Yeshua, your head should be covered as a man or a woman. Baruch Hashem. David knew it, and all the people with him knew it. All the men with him. Mm -hmm. So we go to this place of numbering, but how do I know that the Garden of Eden was the place that later would become the Temple Mount? There are many reasons. We'll go over a lot of them next week, even more. And please hold on to these sheets, okay? If you would, please, hold on to these sheets. Outside the camp, the skull, we'll talk about dying and being buried before Yahweh, the tree of life. We'll talk about that next week. Bereshit 3.24, he drove out the man. Notice, Yahweh's not talking about an automobile or the back seat of a station wagon. Drove out means goodbye. And he placed at the east of Gan Eden. Where's the east? Facing the Mount of? Facing the Mount of? Facing the Mount of? He placed east of Eden, the Temple Mount was where the Yahweh walked with Adam Bechava. He placed east of Gan Eden, Cheruvim, cherubs, and a flaming Cherev sword. By the way, the Hebrew word for Mount Sinai is Horeb or Cherev, meaning the place of the sword. Same thing. 
He placed a flaming sword that turned every direction to guard the way back to the tree of life. You get that? So that the, the cherubim were east of the garden with a sword, notice, a flaming sword that went like this, like a windshield wiper. Like a heavenly windshield wiper was a flaming sword. You with me? It went back and forth so that no one could what? <laughs> Sneak under there and head back to the Garden of Eden without first being count. <laughs> without first being counted at the skull. Once you're counted there, then you can go back. But if you just try to go back without being counted at the place of the, of the appointed place in the in the house of Yahweh, fellow outside the camp, once you were counted there, then you can go back, and then the veil of the temple could be torn to the holy of holies, and then through Yeshua, who goes into the holy of holies, you have the the pathway. When Yeshua said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life," he was looking from the Mount of Olives right into the holy of holies over the bridge, that priestly bridge, and he goes, "That's the way." I'm going down that bridge. I'm going to cross the Kidron Valley over the priest bridge. Will you follow me? I am the way. What way? That bridge was the way back to Eden. The Mishnah tells us that bridge existed in the days of Yeshua and in the days of Melech David. But I'm not done. The scripture tells us, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, what, what hung... <sighs> Go and meet Exodus. Today's Parsha. How many would give me a few more minutes? Exodus, Shemot. Shemot, 35. Shemot, 35. Or 36. I may need your help here because this was not in my notes. I'm looking for the cheruvim. The cheruvim. The cheruvim and the curtain of the tabernacle. Huh? What chapter? 35. 35.17? No. 17. No? What? 36, no. 36, 35. 36, 35. Huh? Okay, here it is. Well, there's two things I want to focus. In the Holy of Holies, listen. In the Holy of Holies. What verse? That, that's the, the uh, mercy seat. Okay. On, on the Ark of the Covenant, on top of the mercy seat, he made two cherovim of gold, beaten of one piece. So over the mercy seat, he had two cherovim. That was the way back to Eden. But, and I don't, I don't have it here, I know it's somewhere. The veil into the Holy of Holies that we, see, we know was torn when Yeshua died, had what on it? What did that veil have? That's the scripture I'm looking for. The, the curtain with the two cherubim. That's the scripture I'm looking for. Well, if you find it later, let me know, because I don't have it. 37A? I don't have it in my notes. 37A? You guys are guessing. Don't guess, please. Am I talking about the, the um, you, that's the mercy seat. No, we're talking about the curtain. Anyway, the curtain, that led into the Holy of Holies had, huh? Somebody have it? Don't guess, please. Make sure you find the curtain. <laughs> Don't guess. What? No, 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 no. It was the curtain with, with two angels, two cherubim. 36, 35? No. No, no, no. 36.8? Yes. Huh? 
No. Okay, anyway, but, but we can use verse 8. We can use 36 8. The tabernacle made 10 curtains of five women with cherubim. No, that's the, the curtains. Anyway, the curtains in front, just listen, the curtains in front of the Holy of Holies had two cherubim. Not only was Yahweh saying that is the way back into Eden, Yahweh was saying this was the Garden of Eden. Because on the, on the veil leading into the Holy of Holies, he had those two cherubim, those two cherubim. You with me? Are you with me? And so he not only said that by that veil being split, the, garden, the way back to Eden is available, he was showing us the original place where he put, because that curtain was facing one mountain. That curtain into the Holy of Holies was facing one mountain. The Mount of Olives. A us into the rescue. You sure? Positive? Pinky square? 2631? No. Okay, but it doesn't say the two cherubim. Okay. But how do you know that's the one in front of the Holy of Holies? Okay, there are several references. Okay. But that's the but we still don't have the, the, the inner veil with the cherubim. Maybe we'll come up with it after, afterward. But again, so the inner veil, we're going to close with this. Give me your attention. The inner veil had two cherubim. So Yahweh was not only showing you the place into the Holy of Holies, he was showing you the place where those angels were put. They were put where? East of Eden, facing the Mount of Olives. So that that curtain was a revelation of where the Garden of Eden was. Because if the way back is through the veil being rent and being torn, right? That's the way back to the Garden of Eden. By putting those cherubim right there, he was showing you that that was the Garden of Eden. Because why didn't Yahweh put the veil with the two cherubim from Genesis 3.24? Why didn't he put that in Tel Aviv? Why didn't he put that in Beersheba? Why didn't he put that in the Golan Heights? Because none of or in Iraq or Babylon, between the, the, the Tigris and the Euphrates. Because none of those places were the Garden of Eden. Right. He put those cherubim where he said it was in Genesis 3.24. So not only is that curtain being split the way back to Yahweh, it is Yahweh's indication to us that these were the cherubim facing east, protecting man. And is that true? Who could go past those cherubim? Nobody. Nobody. Who can go past those two cherubim into the Holy of Holies? Nobody. Only the high priest, once a year, a type of Yeshua, who has entered forever into the Holy of Holies. We love you. Shabbat Shalom. We'll talk more next week. No bones about it. Music, please. Let's go right into the Moed home. Shabbat Shalom.